Footprints of Jesus. This morning to our service. If you're visiting with us, we're glad to have you with us to worship our Lord and Savior today. If you have a bulletin, we'll look at the, the announcements that we have in there. Of course, it's still April and it's still green bean month. So if you could bring some green beans for the food room down here in town, it'd be appreciated. You could leave them in the box in the foyer or back here in the hallway. And then the ladies' Bible study on Elijah. I think it's starting today at 4 o'clock. Yeah, be over in the fellowship hall. If you want to be a part of that, just see Miss Linda Orff there about that, and uh, she'll get you a, a book. Next Saturday, April 30th, we're going to have a work day here at the church at 8 a.m. If you can come be a part of that, to do a little cleaning up and fixing up of some things, be appreciated. The more we have, I guess the quicker we get done, the more we can get done. So if you can come, come on down next Saturday. Big, big day, March, May the 15th, Wash Sunday. We're going to have our wash uh, service there. That All the kids are coming, their parents, and we're going to have a big crowd, I'm sure, and as we uh, end the wash for this year. So come and be a part of that. And there's some other things there. It tells there what's going to happen that day. So be a big, big day. This After our service today, we're going to have a quarterly business meeting. So if you can, stay for that. We'll take care of that. It goes pretty quick usually there, so if you can't stay for that. Tonight we're going to have a, uh, they've concluded Tony Evans is going to have a film uh, tonight or a movie, One Night with the King. So come and be a part of that and watch that. And then on May the 1st, Sunday, May the 1st, Playground Equipment Committee is going to meet at 3 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Playground Equipment Committee. If you're on that committee, come be involved with that. Any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Any prayer requests that we need to mention this morning? <clears throat> Okay, 
Any others? Okay, there's a tragedy over there in South Stone County. Like I said, there was there four people were murdered. Three of them, you said, went to this Foothills Baptist Church, and they had another lady die of a heart attack. And uh, they had prayer there at their church at 6 o'clock last night and asked for prayer for, from everyone. So we do need to remember those people over there uh, in our prayers, uh, what happened, what's going on. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, if not, Kenny, will you lead us in prayer this morning? Amen. All right. Victory in Jesus.
we're going to do a song for praise and worship this morning. Sing with us, please. so thankful for this opportunity to be in your house today and we are thankful that you are the good good father please bless bless the remaining of this service in jesus name i pray amen
Um, I asked Evelyn to play this song for me after I, Linda asked me to sing a week ago, and you spend a week trying to figure out what song you're going to sing, and then I w went to Branson with Kelly to see Jesus at the Sight and Sound Theater yesterday, and we were talking about this song on the way, and I decided, okay, that's what I'm going to do, but it just talks about, it's really a song, she's interceding in prayer for somebody that's going through something, and I'm just so thankful that Jesus defeated sin in the grave, and that he's interceding at the throne of God on our behalf, and we can pray anything in his name and know that God is working, you know. So I hope this blesses your heart. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every promise he's faithful to keep. I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater, he is stronger, he's the God of possible. I pray for your healing. Circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, for restoration of faith. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Mm, thank you, Marissa. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He is worthy of our praise this morning. 
God is worthy of our praise. Let's everybody stand up this morning. Stand up, kind of stretch a little bit. And if you want to shake somebody's hand, you go ahead and do that. If you just want to turn around and wave at somebody, you do that right now. We're going to dismiss for Children's Church at this time. While you're standing up, we're going to dismiss for Children's Church. Maybe somebody you haven't spoken to in a while, give them a good wave. Maybe you can hug them later. All right. Yeah. Hey, JJ. How are you? Good to see you, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, you can be seated. Maybe this morning you have a testimony you'd like to share with us this morning. Something you'd like to share with the congregation. Maybe the Holy Spirit's laid on your heart this morning. Maybe you just want to give the Lord some praise. Come on, Brother Wayne, start us off. Amen. So good to have you back, Brother Wayne. We did miss you. 5,000 miles. Woo! That makes me tired to even think about that. Amen. But anyway, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody else want to stand and give the Lord some praise this morning? Something on your heart? Justin, I thought you was visiting to get up and say something there, man. Kelly, what you want to say? We have had some beautiful days, yes. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for his protecting hand. Amen. Anybody else? God is good. And all the time. Woo, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you have your Bibles today, please be turning to our text, John chapter 6. John chapter 6 is going to be our text today. We're living in unprecedented times. Would you say amen to that? People are searching. People are seeking for truth and for answers. 
because the world only offers temporary fixes. The world only offers theories to the questions that we all have. If you're searching for the real Jesus, if you find yourself on a quest to really get to know him personally, then the Gospel of John is a great place to begin. There's so much information there in the book of John. In fact, that's why the Spirit of God led John to record his 21 chapters. Here's what he tells us in chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. He says, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. That's what John tells us there in chapter 20. John is a book to help us discover Jesus and to come into a personal relationship with Him. Looking at the book of John, we actually see John recording seven signs and or miracles of Jesus to show us that he truly was the Son of God. When you read how he turned the water into wine, you walk away saying, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God. When you read about how he healed the nobleman's son, you walk away saying, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God. Or when he fed the 5,000, when he walked on water, when he healed the man born blind, or when he raised Lazarus from the dead, you reach the same conclusion, and that is Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God. Amen. And John records these Seven signs are seven miracles in the book of John. But John does something else. Not only does he give us, gives us seven signs or seven miracles that prove to us who Jesus is, John also gives us seven I am statements. Seven I am statements. Statements that show us what he does, what Jesus does. And today we're going to begin a new series of messages entitled, I Am. And we're going to be looking at the seven I Am statements of Jesus to discover what Jesus does and what he wants to do in my life and what he wants to do in your life today. So, Take God's word and turn with me to John chapter 6. And there we're going to find the first of the seven I am statements of Jesus. Now, let me tell you this. Before we read our text this morning, before we read the first I am statement of Jesus, I need to warn you about something. I need to warn you that I am changes who I am. Did you hear what I said? I am changes who I am. Now, nowhere in Scripture do we find someone coming in contact with Jesus that their life was not changed. Now, they may have walked away I'm hunting something to wipe some sweat with because I'm going to probably get excited today. Is that okay if I get excited? Amen. I tell you what, if you can't get excited about Jesus, then there's something wrong. Amen. We get excited about everything else. Amen. We get excited about ball games. We get excited about all everything. But I tell you what, let's get excited about Jesus. Amen. But nowhere in Scripture do we see anyone coming in contact with Jesus that their life was not changed. Now, they may have walked away convicted, but most of the time when they came in contact with Jesus, they walked away healed. Amen. They walked away saved. 
at no time do we see anyone coming in contact with Jesus that they were not changed somehow and in some way. So how does I am change who I am? How does I am change who you are? Well, today we're going to begin with our first message entitled The Bread of Life because Jesus tells us in our text that he is the bread of life. I am the bread of life. So if you have our text this morning, John chapter 6, we're going to read several passages. They're out of John chapter 6. If you have that, say, I have it, Pastor. Let's everybody stand in the reverence to the reading of God's word. John chapter 6, we'll begin in verse 32. What do you got? A microphone on? Turn it off. Maybe it's over here. Here it is, right here. We'll fix that. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Verse 32. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger And he who believes in me shall never thirst. Now look down with me to verse 48. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread... He will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word today. May it sink deep into our hearts and change us. Lord, may we be attentive to hear what you want to tell us today. You have your way in this service. Anoint this time. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. So here in chapter 6, we see Jesus declaring himself as I am. And when he did so, the minds of the people that day went back to the time of Moses, to the time that Moses encountered God back in Exodus chapter 3. You know, today when we meet somebody for the first time, we have a few visitors here this morning. The first time I met them was this morning. But normally when we meet someone for the first time, we normally shake their hands and we tell them our name, and in turn we ask them for their name. That's the normal thing to do. That's how we meet and greet people, with a handshake. Well, when God introduced himself to Moses, he didn't shake Moses' hand. He shook Moses up. Amen? I'll say that again. When, When God met Moses, or when Moses met God, God didn't shake his hand. God shook him up. Amen. He spoke to him from a burning bush. You remember the story. We talked about it Wednesday in our wash worship time. He spoke to him from a burning bush. And in Exodus chapter 3 verse 6, he told Moses, he says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And then God told Moses that, He, Moses, was going to lead the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt and he was going to lead them into the promised land. And of course, you know the story Moses said in 
uh, verses 13 and 14 of Exodus chapter 3. He says, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, You tell them, I am sent you. <laughs> you tell them, I am sent you. He said, I am the God that was. I am the God that is. I am the God that always will be. That's who's sending you, Moses. You tell them, I am is sending you. God was saying, whatever your need is, I am. So when Jesus declares his identity in John chapter 6, he used the same exact divine wording that was used in Exodus chapter 3. Jesus used the exact same wording, I am, there in John chapter 6. The same name. So what does it mean for us today when Jesus says, I am the bread of life? In other words, how does Jesus saying, I am the bread of life, change who I am? How does Jesus saying, I am the bread of life, change who you are today? Well, as the bread of life, first of all, Jesus saves us. As the bread of life, Jesus saves us. If you want to follow along there on your bulletin, you can fill in the blanks. You know, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he had been talking about Moses. He said there in verse 32 of John chapter 6, Then Jesus said unto them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Now keep in mind, on the previous day, Jesus had done a miracle. He had fed 5,000 men with five barley loaves of bread and two small fish. Remember, this had happened the day before. They even had 12 baskets filled after the feeding of leftovers. And I'm sure they went home that night and probably partook of some of those leftovers. So here they are the next day. They had bread in their stomach, I'm sure, and they had bread on their minds because of what had happened the previous day. And now Jesus mentions Moses, and he tells them that Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. So what was he talking about here? Well, in Exodus chapter 16, we read about the manna that God had sent the Israelites. The children of Israel had only been gone about a month out of Egypt, and they were already complaining against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness, and they were hungry. And here's what happened. Exodus 16, 4 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota each day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And then verse 14 says, And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Verse 31 says, And the house of Israel called its name manna. And it was like white coriander seed, coriander seed, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And the children of Israel ate manna 40 years <laughs> until they came to an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Now, there's one thing about mealtime during that day and time. You didn't have to ask what you was having for breakfast or lunch or supper. You knew what you were going to have. The question they always ask, I'm sure, was, how did you fix it today? How did you fix it today? I remember the movie Forrest Gump, how he was going to be a shrimp boat captain. And he and Bubba, remember, 
Bubba began to tell him how many different ways you could fix shrimp, right? Well, I can imagine after eating this manna for 40 years, Julia Child didn't have anything on the Israelites because I'm sure they probably had, they had put together a recipe book entitled A Hundred Ways to Cook Manna. But did you notice that God sent just enough each day to meet their need? Nothing more and nothing less. He wanted them to learn to depend upon him one day at a time. I think that's where the writer of that song, One Day at a Time, got their idea. It's because God wanted the children of Israel to depend on him one day at a time. Listen, my friend, that manna was God's provision for the Israelite people. And hear what Jesus is saying in John chapter 6, verse 32 and 33. Listen to it again. Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. You know, I may shout just a little bit this morning because we are a bunch of shouting Baptists around here, and it's okay to shout if you want to but here listen to me what manna was to the Israelite people in the Old Testament Jesus is for us today amen the manna was the life giving force for the people of, of in, in that day and today my friend Jesus is our life amen he is our savior he is our saving grace amen just as the manna kept the Israelite people from perishing. Guess what? Jesus keeps us from perishing. Amen. He saves us. I am changes who I am. Jesus said in verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. Not die. As the bread of life, Jesus saves us. He saves us from the penalty of sin, that eternal separation. But he also saves us from the power of sin. That's daily liberation. And look, we, when we get saved, we are saved. But we're being saved every day. And in one day when he comes for us, we will be saved. Amen. Salvation is an ongoing experience. And it's all because of Jesus Christ. As the bread of life. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? They shall be filled. Amen. They shall be filled. I am who cha changes who I am. And when we accept the bread of life, we are saved. So Jesus, the bread of life, saves us. Are you awake this morning? Have you partaken of that bread of life? Amen. If you are, you're saved this morning. Amen. That's something to shout about. Amen. Wake up out there. Amen. If you're on your way to heaven, wake up. Amen. It's going to get better. Amen. But not only does Jesus as the bread of life save us, secondly, Jesus as the bread of life satisfies us. If you go back and look to the second part of verse 35, of our text, he says, He who comes to me shall never hunger, and who, he who believes in me shall never thirst. Speaking of thirst, I think I'll get some water right now. You know, there are some things I can eat and never get full of. Fruit does that to me. I just, I love fruit, and I could just eat fruit and eat fruit and eat fruit and eat fruit, and it seems like I never get filled. Now, other things I can eat, like Chinese, and I get full pretty quick. I, I, I can leave there feeling kind of miserable, especially when I go to the buffet. And y'all know what the buffet stands for, right? Big, ugly, fat folks eating together. That's it right there, amen. Amen. So some things, it takes more of to fill me up than others. 
It works the same way spiritually. That's from a physical standpoint. But it works the same way spiritually. We try satisfying our deepest hungers with the things that either never fully satisfy us or only satisfies us temporarily. That manna that we read about in Exodus not only saved them, but it satisfied them. And what manna was to them in the book of Exodus, Jesus is to us today, 2022. He is the bread of life. Psalm 107, 9 says that the bread of life satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness we're living in a time my folks let me tell you something people are looking everywhere for things to satisfy them they're looking to alcohol and they're looking to drugs and they're looking to sex and they're looking for relationships they're looking for any and everything to satisfy them but I want you to know you'll never find anything to satisfy your soul like Jesus Christ satisfies you amen because he made you he created you and there's a void in your life and that void in your life can only be filled with him, amen. Jesus satisfies you, amen. He satisfies you, satisfaction, guaranteed, amen. Now, let me ask you a question Is your soul satisfied today, or is your soul longing for something? You know, I think about those thousands of people Moses was leading through the wilderness for 40 years. God saw it that every day they woke up hungry. He gave them just enough the day before to fill them up, but not too much because he wanted them hungry the next morning. Now, don't, don't look over this. This is important. God gave them just enough the day before to fill them up, satisfy them. But when they woke up the next morning, he wanted them hungry. And when they went outside, there was the man on the ground. And they went out and gathered just enough to fill them up for that day. And when they laid down that night, their stomachs were full. I think a lot of the problems today with the church is that we've become complacent. And we're not hungry for God. When they woke up, they were hungry. They depended on God. God has blessed us so much to a point that we've become complacent. And we don't need him like we once needed him. I was there when 9-11 happened. And I know what, how people acted the week after, and the week after that, and the week after that, and the week after that. Our churches were filled. I was too young when Vietnam happened to remember. But my parents told me that's the way it was when Vietnam was going on. Churches were full. People were crying in the altars. Keep my boy safe. Keep my boy safe. Keep my child safe. We've become so blessed. We've become complacent. God wants us hungry. God wants us hungry because he wants us to depend on him. And if we come to God hungry, Jesus says he's the bread of life. And he who eats of that bread will not be hungry. We'll be satisfied. We'll never thirst again. God will always fill us up, but we need to come to him hungry. That wonder bread, that manna from heaven, supplied salvation to God's people. But it also supplied satisfaction. And thirdly, it supplied something else. Not only does the bread of life save you, not only does the bread of life satisfy you, but thirdly, Jesus as the bread of life strengthens you. Psalm 27, 14 says, And he will strengthen your heart. Now, I want you to think 
of the physical strength that the Israelites needed in that desert just to put one step in front of the other. Day by day, 40 years as they traveled, they had to deal with daily wind. They had to deal with daily sand. They had to deal with daily sun. They needed strength. And God gave them everything they needed, including strength. They looked to their daily portion of manna to provide the strength for the entire day. Let me ask you something. What are you looking for for your strength? What are you looking for for your strength? A lot of people today look for their careers as their strength. They look to the stock market. They look for their to their 401k. I told somebody, I don't have a 401k. I just got the one gay. That's all I got. But what are you looking for for your strength? You know, my Bible says that all of this stuff is going to melt away one day, going to burn up. Amen. What are you looking for as a Christian to live your daily life out as a Christian? Folks, I'm going to tell you, it's getting harder and harder to live out a Christian life in the world in which we now reside. And if Jesus does not come back soon, it's going to get harder and harder to live out your Christianity. But where do you get your strength from? Who are you looking for, for your strength to be the man and woman or woman that God called you to be? How is that, how that manna provided strength for the challenges of each day for the Israelites? That same bread, Jesus Christ, can provide strength to us today. Amen. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. I want you to listen. Are you listening this morning? Jesus is more than enough. Jesus is more than enough. Some of you, you're having problems. Some of you are brokenhearted. Some of you are facing things. Nightmares that you prayed would never happen in your life, but you found yourself there. And I don't mean nightmares as far as dreams at night. That's not what I'm talking about. But things are happening in your life that you thought would never happen. And you're needing the strength of Jesus. Let me tell you, Jesus is more than enough. He's more than enough. You just look to him because he's the saving bread. He's the satisfying bread. And he is the strengthening bread. In closing this morning, every morning that the children of Israel woke up and went outside, they could either pick up that manna for their daily bread or they could walk on by. They could either pick it up or they could just leave it on the ground and walk on by. And it's the same way with you today. Jesus is the bread of life. You can either accept him as your personal Savior, and he will become your saving bread, your satisfying bread, your strengthening bread, and we could go on and on and on, but I stopped at three. Or you can just pass him by. But do you know if they would have passed that bread by, they would have perished. They would have died. Well, it's the same way today. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you don't have that relationship with him, you'll die in your sin.
You say, well, I don't believe God would condemn me. He's a loving God. The Bible says that if you do not accept him, you're condemned already. You don't have to be condemned. You're already condemned. So what will you do today? Will you take Jesus? Will you pick up Jesus and allow him to be your saving bread? Your satisfying bread, your strengthening bread? Or will you pass him by? The choice is yours. I am changes who I am. Jesus is the bread of life. He can change you today. Will you accept him? watching.